Shalom, Israel. Shalom. Shalom. Shalom to all the 12 tribes that's out there scattered abroad. Shalom to all the men that's out there on the battlefield. May Yahweh increase the strength of his armor upon you 1,000 fold. And Shalom to all the women and children that's out there helping their leaders to get the truth out here, to bring our brothers and sisters back to godliness and holiness in these last days. All right, today I want to do a quick breakdown on behalf of my brothers and sisters tonight. The Haitians and the Dominican Republicans. Yes, the Haitians and the Dominicans. I'm going to let y'all know off the gate that y'all are the, um, a part of the 12 tribes of Israel. Y'all are Jews, but we're not going to take my word for it. We're going to look at these Bible verses, break down these prophecies, and we're going to look at historical facts that's already out there. And the reason they have this stuff out here because they know as a people, as the Israelites, as a nation, they done broke us down so much. And we done got so embedded into their doctrine that they know we don't care no more about coming back to the Bible, about keeping the law, statutes, and commandments. Because we so called, we're so comfortable living in bondage. And they know this. And they promote this. So nevertheless, let's get into it. All right. The prophecy of Simeon and Levi, Dominican Republic, Haiti. Okay, let's start right here. The island of Espanola. Now think about this. The, why Why in the hell would they name this the island of Espanola? Who did this? You know who it was? It was Christopher Columbus. So you ever heard the saying where they said um, Christopher Columbus sailed the blue in 1492? Yeah, he sailed the blue in 1492. But let's see what somebody already over there. Because how can you name an a, a island what you want to name it if somebody was already over there? We're going to look at it. Let's bring it up. Let's see. The first Jewish settlement. Now, look at this. You finna catch him in your life if, if he so called found this land and nobody else was over there. Let's see. In 1492, the first Jews to ever set foot in Haiti. Watch this. Now, let's catch this line. I'm gonna read it again. In 1492, the first Jew to ever set foot in Haiti was Louis de Torres, an interpreter for Christopher Columbus. Now, think about this. How, why do you need an interpreter? A Jewish interpreter to be with you to go over to this island. You know why? Because you already knew we was over there. That don't even make sense. So how is he the first Jew to ever set foot in Haiti when he's in he's there to be an interpreter for you to, to the people that's in the island? That clearly let you know we was already over there. Continue. After Haiti was taken over and colonized by the French in 1633, they clearly telling you many Dutch Jews of whom of whom um, were many Moreno. Moreno means Spanish Jews. And then you know, the, um, the transatlantic slave, slave trade, they conquered um, us Israelites over there too and named them Mexicans. That's where you get the Mexicans from. And the Indians, remember in the United States, when Christopher Columbus called himself going over there and finding that land, the Indians, we was already over there, the tribe of Gab. And they massacred and slaughtered all the, um, all the Indians. Once again, letting you know, we was already over there before they came. Okay, continuing. Um, immigrated from Brazil in 1634. They talking about the um the Spanish Jews that was conquered down there. They traveled. They migrated from Brazil in 1634 and became employees of the French sugar plantation and further developed um the trade. So let me show y'all real quick. Let me show y'all for y'all who don't know where Brazil is. I'm gonna show you where Brazil is. I can pull this over here now. I put it down. Let me show you. Let me see. Okay, listen, yo, so here's Brazil right here. Look, Brazil. Hold on. Salaki. Yeah, Brazil is right here, and they traveled up to Haiti. That's right here. To be a part of the sugar, uh, um, be a part of the sugar plantation. All right, let's see going on. And became employees of the French sugar plantation and further developed the trade. In 1683, the Jews were expelled from Haiti. They was kicked out. Now, they was kicked out from Haiti and all other French colonies. Now, you know, French colonies, that was there too. Due to the court, uh, the Code North or the Black Code, which both restricted the activities of free Negroes and forbade, which means forbid, the exercise of any religion other than the Roman Catholic, um, Catholicism. Literally, now, you know, you know, the Roman people, that they the ones that Christianity was developed from the Romans. And they came over there trying to take over everything. That's how come you got the Roman Catholic Church in the United States, if that makes sense. You got Baptist, Methodist. It's these people. They was once again trying to stay, trying to deprive us from um from um practicing our Judaism, which we are the Israel, um, which we are the Jews, 
And he tried to force us to do Roman Catholic, just like they do in the United States. Watch this. However, despite the cold nor a limited number of Jews remained in French trading companies. Literally, you know, we still was kind of dealing with them, but they expelled us from Haiti. Nevertheless, we still end up like, you know, so we still end up coming back over there and, st and started um the, the um, and started developing our own independence. So why I'm saying that? I'm saying that to say this. So we're gonna bring out this other truth. Let's go back over here. Let's go. This is the prophecy given by by our forefather Jacob concerning the offspring of these two brothers, where their dwellings will be, and what shall befall them in these latter days. Genesis chapter forty nine verse five through seven. Simeon and Levi are brethren. Instruments of cruelty are in their habitations. Now just to um just to make a long story short. What happened was the um the Canaanites, which were Africans, they end up um they end up taking advantage of their sister, and they went and got revenge, and they killed um they killed the Africans, they killed a lot of African men. So just um just want to bring that out. All right, continue. These two tribes share one island: the tribe of Simeon, the so-called Dominicans, and the tribe of Levi, the so-called Haitians, right next to one another on the same island. That's what Jacob was referring to when he says they are brethren, which right here, you can see the picture right here, Haiti and Dominican Republic. All right. So moving on. Um, instruments of cruelty are in their habitations. The instrument of cruelty that's in their habitation is the voodoo that they use against each other. Everybody know that Haiti is known for using voodoo and Dominican Republic, um, too. They known for using it, too. It's called um. Bruhiti, Bru Bruhiti, I'm not pronouncing it right, but both of them use voodoo amongst each other. Okay, so, um, moving on. The French colonization of the island has played divide and conquer and has separated the two tribes from their history and knowing who they are as a people. Now, look, look what's so funny about that. They said the French colonization, which they did, of the island has played divide and conquer. But you know what? And you know who else told them they was going to be divided? Um, their father Jacob, and we're gonna pull up. We're gonna bring it out. We're gonna look at this. I'm gonna show you this. So, um, verse five, uh, Genesis chapter forty nine, verse five. Simeon and Levi are brethren. Instruments of cruelty are in their habitations. Verse six. O oh my soul, come not into their secret. Now, think about this. If the father tell you, O oh my soul, um, come not into their secret. That's that's the father. That's the blessings of the father, and that's why you think about it. Um, Haiti is poor. Uh, Haiti is like one of the poorest countries, but we're going to get into that. We're going to see why they're one of the poorest countries. It was already a prophecy, obviously, because their father um, deemed the curse, you know, them cursed. Moving on. Unto their, unto their assembly, mine honor, be not thou united. Letting you know, like, y'all, y'all, even though y'all going to be on the same island, y'all ain't going to be united. For in their anger, they slew a man, and in their self will, think about this, they dig down a wall. Come on, man, that, that, the way he used these words literally lets you know they were going to be divided. They dig down a wall. What do you mean they dig down a wall? Look, if you look at the island, literally Haiti and Dominican Republic, what sense does that make this one big island and they're still separate? Literally fulfilling biblical prophecy. They um dig down their own wall. Curse be their anger. So, Salakia. Um, Salakia, let's see. Let me go back up. Verse 7, Cursed be their anger, for it was fierce, and their wrath, for it was cruel. I will divide them in Jacob. Now, you know, in Israel, y'all still going to be divided. And scatter them in Israel. Clearly, um, fulfilling biblical prophecy. Um, letting you know. So, let's go back. Um, so, like, yeah. Kind of moving too fast. All right, kind of lost track. Okay, so I bring it out just to let you know simply that uh, y'all the Jews, y'all the Israelites. But I want to show y'all a picture of the um, transatlantic slave trade, which we Christopher Lumber just we we just read it. We just read that he brought um, a Jew interpreter to come with him to the um, to the island of Haiti. He's literally letting you know his name was Louis de Torres. Now you know we was already over there, and um, and we was all. Um, Salakia, after Haiti was taken over and colonized by the French in 1633. Now, you know, we was taken over. So now let's look at a picture of the transatlantic slave trade. We're going to see this. 
Now this this is this is um magnificent to see this now. Watch. You gotta you gotta watch the word that they put out here. They kind of, they letting y'all know literally without he they letting y'all know, but you have to read it and catch it. Now look, the transatlantic the trans and Atlantic slave trade. Captives take it from Africa to the Americas and Europe between the 16th and 19th century. Now look, I'm gonna read it again. Listen. Captives taken. They never, it was never African captives. They didn't send their own people over there. The Israelites was held captives. According to biblical prophets, you can look, it said captives taken from Africa. Even the Africans know that. If you go over there and look up the history and see did they ever have captives, they're going to show you, yeah, it was the Israelites. They, you're going to figure out the truth. It was the Israelites. If you don't want to believe in the Bible, they're going to show you, yeah, it was. It wasn't them. You clearly can see a difference between African people and us. They know that. They know it's a difference between us two. They had us in the captivity. If you read um, in the Bible, the story of Moses, when he said, let my people go, that was the Israelites. And they was in Egypt. Egypt is in where? In Africa. Clearly, now you know we are two different peoples. That's why I said captives taken from Africa. Because they was known to take us into captivity anyways. So that's why the Europeans got with the Africans. And they said, hey, man, look, we need, we need some people to help, um, you know what I'm saying, establish our, our land over here. We'll trade with y'all. We got the ships. We're going to go over there. We'll bring goods back to y'all. We'll give y'all guns and sugar and whatever y'all need. But we need to trade. We need y'all to trade captives with us. And that's how you got the translated transatlantic slave trade. It's literally showing you from Africa, from west, from the west part of Africa, which is said in Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 6 to 8, when he was talking to the Israelite, when God was talking to Israelite, he said, and I will bring thee into Egypt again, uh, Egypt again. Let you know we was in Egypt, which represents bondage. We was at bondage at one point in time. But he, he said, I'll bring you into Egypt again because, you know, that would strike something in our minds saying, oh, man, wait a minute. He's going to put us in slavery again. And we still ain't listening. And that's why he and he said with ships. Literally, that's how we got from Africa over to Haiti, to South America, to North America with ships. You can't make this stuff up. So literally, we just proved to tonight to the Haitians and to the um, Dominicans that y'all are from the tribe of Levi, that the Haitians are from the tribe of Levi, and Dominicans are from the tribe of Simeon. Literally, now you know, that's how y'all got over here. So the next time somebody call y'all African-American or black and even Haitian, you be like, okay, yeah, you can say I'm Haitian, but um, but I'm an Israelite, I'm a Jew. Oh, and the brain is, uh, the brain is, the reason, I'm, I'm going to prove to y'all too, I'm a, I'm a, um, it's something I wrote down, some information. How come Haiti is poor? So, like we said, they had got expelled out of there, right? And even the French colonists. But obviously, you know, Jews end up probably still was living over there. So, in 1804, Napoleon, he sent a general. Um, his name was um, Charles. Let me, let me read. Let me make sure I don't want to um, mess up anything. I don't want to mess up anything. Give me a minute, Joe. Okay, here you go. In 1804. Look, it said, when did Haiti win its independence from France? Literally, now you know it was a war. Napoleon sent General Charles Leclerc, Leclerc, I don't know how to pronounce it, I'm sorry, to overthrow him and restore French rule. But Haitians, led by Sean Jacques um, Dessalines and Henry uh, Christophe, prevailed over the French. And Dessalines declared Haiti Independent, 1804. Literally, now you know, remember, the, it, you can't make this stuff up. The French, they left from, they got expelled from the French colony, left from over there. But in 1804, they tried to come back and um and take over. But, hey, them Haitians were like, hell no, nah, we ain't finna let y'all, y'all think y'all finna take, y'all got nothing coming. Because, you know, that island ain't that small. So, you know what I'm saying? And then they already um was on the United States. So, I don't know why they didn't prevail, but it was by the will of Yahweh. But nevertheless, that curse that their father said, let my soul not come to them, they still was cursed. You know what I'm saying? Because of um, because of what y'all forefathers did. But on a positive note, just letting y'all know, y'all are the Israelites. And the way we can break these curse of our forefathers, all of us as a whole, we need to come back to the law, statute, and, and commandments. Because if you was Jews and they tried to force y'all to um, do Roman Catholics, Catholic, um, Catholic practice, what that tells you, we was doing Judaism, we are Jews. They tried to put another doctrine on us. And they know once we come to the law, statutes, and commandments, we will become so powerful. We'll become overpowerful. Matter of fact, let's bring it out in the Bible. Let's bring it out. Let's bring this out tonight. Let's see. Dude. Uh, uh. Okay. Deuteronomy chapter 28. All right. Let's see. We'll start at. Okay, we'll start at Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1. 
And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. Now think about this. Everybody always saying all people are equal. God uh, made all people equal. Not trying to say God is a mean God, but no, everybody's not equal because he's talking to the Israelites. Anybody who knows the Bible, who studied the Bible in the church, they know God's chosen people are the Israelites. And he gave them the law, statutes, and commandments. Notice, he didn't say the whole world. He's talking to the Israelites. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. They're going to be above all nations. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. We got to go ahead and bring this up. Let's um, drop down to um, verse 15. For time's sake. This is just for the, uh, for the Haitians and Dominicans. Just to prove to y'all. But it shall come to pass. If thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Literally, you know, cursed shalt thou be in the city, and cursed shalt thou be in the field. We already read it. And once y'all was seized over there, <clears throat> the, um, the Jamaicans, uh, the Brazil, the, the, the Israelites in Brazil, they end up coming up there into Haiti, and they started doing the, um, the, the sugar plantations. Literally, y'all know they took over y'all. We don't need to go over that no more. It's just letting you know. So let's drop down to, we're going to drop down to verse 68 for time's sake. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Literally, now you know, with ships. We just showed you that. I don't need, I'm going to go back to it and show you again. With ships. Boom. Letting you know that's how we got over there. With ships. By the way, wherefore I speak unto thee. Thou shalt see it no more again. We haven't been over there. We literally have been. A, they said we're not even from Africa, but we haven't been over there in Israel and so-called Afro Africa since we came over here. Moving on, and there they shall be sold unto your enemies, for bond men and bond women. When we got who, who who captured us? It was the French. We just let you know it was the Romans and the French. Was which which is who the Edomites? Which when we already know what race of people they are. They're the Edomites. They came and uh, held us captives. And you will be sold to your enemies for bond men and bond women. We were sold literally when we got off the ship. These are historical facts. We can't make this up. Let's bring it out. Let, let me show you. Let me show y'all. Let me show y'all a picture. Look. Literally, these are ships that we were brought into. Plan of Lord Deck with the storage of 292 slaves. Literally letting you know. Look at this. And if you catch it, look, look. The truth is out here so much, it's ridiculous. If you notice, look how they was painted. They wasn't painted pitch black. If they was Africans, they literally would have painted their skin pitch black. But no, they knew it was us. That's why they're painted brownish. That's why they're painted dark, um, kind of like golden dark brown. Because they knew it wasn't African. It was us. And not saying some of the Africans probably um, end up getting on, the, um, getting on the ship. But no, it was the Israelites. So that's all I wanted to bring it out tonight. I wanted to uh, make this special, you know, this special um, study for the Haitians and the Dominicans. May y'all be blessed. May we all come back to the law, statutes, and commandments as a nation, as all 12 tribes of Israel. And let's come back to holiness and let's prepare ourselves for the second coming of Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai by Hashem, Ra HaKadosh. All praise to Yahweh Shai when he returns. Shalom.